Hi, my name is Geneviève Rainville. I'm a speech and language pathologist in Quebec, Canada. In the first part of this series of videos on winning conditions to learn, I briefly explained the process of learning. In the second part, we will see how to ensure that learning will last. Before we begin, let's review a bit. Remember that to facilitate learning, we need a little challenge. In the metaphor I used previously, a small challenge was illustrated by an alien for whom Theo had to prepare coffee, which represented a limited amount of new content to process in his working memory. We also saw that a task containing several completely new or not yet well consolidated pieces of information leads to cognitive overload. You know, that unpleasant state experienced by Theo as he had ultimately spilled the coffee. And in this state, poor Theo couldn't learn. I also explained that it is through repeated practice that we achieve the consolidation of new knowledge, which is transferred permanently to long-term memory. Today, we will see that at this stage, we cannot really declare victory yet. Indeed, the city in my metaphor, long-term memory, is constantly evolving. New knowledge is regularly welcomed and new houses you know, the schemas of our long-term memory, are sometimes built. Prior knowledge creates links with new knowledge in the city. At this stage, it is essential to understand a key principle. Although practice leading to consolidation is crucial, research has shown that it is nevertheless retrieval that contributes the most to learning. When we try to recall previously learned information, two things can happen. Maybe we remember it. We might then think that we simply have verified that we knew the information. However, we have done much more. We have improved the strength of storage as well as the strength of retrieval. But maybe we don't remember it, or not quite. This is because over time, some knowledge is no longer as easy to recall. We know it's there, somewhere in the city, but we've, if we haven't invited it to the cafe for a long time, retrieving this information from memory can require quite a bit of effort. And sometimes we simply can't. Let's see an example. In class, Julia's teacher just introduced an equivalence. She wrote on the board that the fraction one half is equal to the decimal number five tenths. Julia didn't know this. The teacher made connections with prior knowledge, which gave several anchor points to this new knowledge. Julia already knew how to read the decimal number five tenths correctly, and her teacher made her realize that this is also how we read the fraction five tenths. Julia, having previously done many exercises on equivalent fractions, knows how to recognize without effort that the fraction five tenths is equivalent to one half. All of this was placed on a number line halfway between zero and one. These links with her prior knowledge facilitated a good start in her learning process. The next day, the teacher asked all the students to recall the equivalence they had learned the day before. She gave enough time for everyone to search their memory. Julia had to make an effort. The answer was not retrieved immediately. As this is new learning, it is fragile. But Julia eventually managed to remember it without looking at her notes. When the teacher wrote the equivalence on the board, Julia was able to validate her answer. 
Julia is reaping the benefits of retrieval practice. She takes one more step towards lasting learning. We sometimes think that rereading or looking at our notes without trying to recall them first is a good way to validate our learning. Understanding or recognizing what we are looking at leads us to believe that we really have learned it. In fact, we cannot claim to have acquired knowledge that we cannot name or explain to someone else without consulting our notes. We can test ourselves in a multitude of ways. One could use exercises that require short answers, extended responses, or even multiple choice questions. One could fill uh, conceptual maps from memory, answer questions asked by an adult, explain to parents, siblings, friends, or even to a pet. And you know what? Classroom assessments also serve as retrieval practice. They actually serve much more than we might initially believe. On the one hand, they highlight incomplete or incorrect understanding among some students, allowing teachers, for example, to rectify possible misconceptions. On the other hand, formative assessments reinforce storage and thus will lead to easier retrieval in the future. And where do you, parents, fit into this? Well, if your child reports having difficulty learning or remembering something, or if you notice it yourself, make it your business. However, be aware that it is preferable not to target too many objectives at once. Julia's mother realized that her daughter always seems to forget that a quarter of an hour is the same as 15 minutes. She uses a calendar to note when she questions her daughter about it. She knows that asking Julia a simple question only takes very little time, but it is still easy to forget. The calendar serves as a reminder. To summarize, it would be quite appropriate to pause this video and attempt to recall what you have learned in the last few minutes. I will now offer my own summary so that you can validate your recall. We have seen that learning is not yet complete when storage happens thanks to repeated practice. The storage strength and retrieval strength will be improved through re retrieval practice. This requires effort, but the reward will be more solid and durable learning. We have also learned that reviewing or looking at our notes is not as effective a strategy as retrieval practice. Finally, I have encouraged you to support your kids by regularly encouraging them to recall essential knowledge such as a math equivalence, your phone number, or what a predicate could possibly be. That's all for today, but um, I'm not done telling you about the winning conditions to learn. Stay tuned for the publication of part three. Do you want to know more? You could find many publications on the subject, but here is a reference to a recent systematic literature review. See you next time.